Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Luke chapter 22 verses 31 to 32. Satan asked for permission to sift Peter. And this permission was granted. Many centuries earlier, Satan had made the same request about Job. And I want to assure you that Satan is making the same request about you. Sifting is a process farmers use after harvesting to separate the chaff from the grain. The farmer takes the whole harvest of wheat to the threshing floor where they are beaten with sticks. The grains fall off and the wind is applied. The wind blows the chaff, which is lightweight, away, and the grain is left. The farmer then collects the grain for food, but he collects the chaff and burns it. Sometimes during the blowing period, some of the grain is blown away with the chaff. Both God and Satan have reasons for engaging in the sifting process. God wants everything that is not food, that is, the thrash, to disappear from the life of the believer. Satan, on the other hand, wants as much wheat as possible, to be blown away with the chaff and lost. He wants the wheat to be lost and the chaff to remain. So all through the Bible we never encounter Satan asking to sift backslidden Christians. He doesn't need to sift a Christian who is already living in sin. That life is already full of chaff. His focus is on the whole wheat grains. He wants those whom God has testified. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil, Job chapter 1 verse 8. That is where his focus is, and that is where he marshals all his forces to attack. Why did Satan want to sift Peter? Because Peter was marked for greatness. Earlier Jesus had asked his disciples. But who do you say that I am? And Peter had answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then Jesus told Peter, Blessed are you, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Matthew chapter 16 verses 17 to 19. Immediately Satan set his eyes on Peter. Whenever the blessings of the Lord come upon you, know that Satan is going to come after you. Whenever you think you are growing spiritually in the Lord, he is going to come after you. Anytime anyone takes a stand for the Lord, he or she becomes a target for Satan. And so Paul warned the Corinthians. Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12. Why does God allow Satan to sift believers? The believer needs the sifting process to take away the chaff from his life. The believer needs to get under the hand of the potter so that God will mold him as he wishes. Can I not do with you as this potter? Says the Lord. Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 6. He needs to pass through the furnace fire of the refiner. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver, he will purify. And purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness, Malachi chapter 3 verse 3. All these processes remove imperfections in the life of the Christian. So whilst Satan thinks he is doing harm to the children of God, he simply is an instrument in God's hands to carry out his plans with his children. What happens during the sifting process? The life of Job gives a perfect picture of what one goes through when you are under the hand of the potter or passing through the refiner's fire. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 10. Just as during the sifting on the threshing floor, the wheat is separated from the chaff, so too God uses the process to take out the evil from our lives. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 4 says, Take away the dross from silver, and it will go to the silversmith for jewelry. The refining process makes us fit for the master's use. Peter needed to go through the sifting process so that he learned of the weakness of his flesh. And the lessons he learned enabled him to strengthen his brothers. 
And so we hear the unrefined Peter vehemently saying he would never leave the side of Jesus. But he said to him, Lord, with you I am ready to go both to prison and to death. Luke chapter 22 verse 33. A few moments later he denied Jesus three times. Later Peter would tell us how to endure the sifting process in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in various trials. God, through the agency of the Holy Spirit, brings to the fore our weaknesses, ungodly behavior, and attitudes. We see the dross in our lives rise to the surface, as the Master turns on the heat. And God, in His mercy, skims off the impurities and dross from our lives. These dross and dirt can appear as our dependency on the arm of flesh, unforgiveness, anger, fear, bitterness, or sinful desires. As the fire of God's furnace burns, we are no longer rigid, but we become pliable so that God is able to fashion us into the vessel, that would most bring honor to His name. The process also entails us passing through trials and tribulations. We may lose the things we treasure most. God will remove anything that hinders your Christian growth, anything that hinders your fellowship with Him. It is not a pleasant experience. Just as fire burns so shall we experience the unpleasant feeling of the fire of the Holy Spirit as it refines us. What is the outcome of this sifting process? The Apostle James when writing his epistle starts off by telling us how we can profit from trials. He says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4. The sifted Christian can say with the Apostle Paul, Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. Philippians chapter 3 verse 8. The sifted Christian has one goal, to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You see, during the sifting process the Christian comes to the realization that, the only thing that matters is his relationship with Christ. The sifting process also makes us battle ready to serve in the army of the Lord. The Christian who has been sifted, feeds the sheep, and does not run away when the wolf comes. How can he? He has faced the worst of Satan during his sifting process. What more can the devil offer that has not already been dealt with at Calvary? Why would he quake in fear when he has been victorious at Calvary? The sifted Christian is battle-tested and ready to serve his Lord and Master. Count it all joy when you go through the sifting process. I hope the message has blessed you and strengthened you to be battle-ready. Please subscribe and share to support our work. God bless you. Amen.